Good morning, Revolution, and welcome to Good Morning Revolution. <laughs> happy New Year, everybody. And uh, we're so happy to see you. Uh, we hope that you're staying healthy and safe, uh, physically distant, but socially close. We're here with Rosanna, Scott, and Anita. Hey, y'all, what's going on? Good morning. On? Good, morning. Good, morning. Good morning. Good morning, Revolution. Right, great to... uh, in addition, we hope that your Capitol buildings are not currently occupied by, uh, by uh, fascist thugs. Uh, <laughs> Well, your Capitol building is not occupied because you're no, no out there in the woods. <laughs> <laughs> you're well, the out New there York in State Capitol and... building's got plenty of problems, but uh, 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 right. fascist occupation is not one. Yes, well, so it's been one hell of a week uh, since last time we met. Oh my goodness, what happened in Washington on, on Wednesday? Um, who wants to give an instant analysis? Are we going to have a new president, Rosanna, on January 20th, or is Trump going to still be in office? Well, we're going to have a new president, but uh, the circumstances are going to be difficult, in my opinion. I don't think that we should let down our guard. Mm -hmm. You know, I think uh, Trump just turned his back on all of his supporters, totally betrayed them. Uh, but that doesn't mean that he's retreating. That doesn't mean that he may not have something under his, mm -hmm. you know, under his hat, is, I guess is the expression. And I think. Uh, wait, you know, did, 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 did you hear that noise? That's the sound of Lindsey Graham kicking Donald Trump under the bus. <laughs> <laughs> did you, did you well, hear Lindsey Graham's speech? Yes. Uh, when, huh? <clears throat> yeah. Lindsey Graham, you're next. <laughs> right, and yeah. Mitch. You know that's right. Oh, did yeah. you hear Lindsey Graham? Oh, did you hear his speech? It was mm -hmm. very eloquent. Uh, Wednesday night after the <laughs> when they re when they reconvened. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I'll give him an A for acting, Anita. But I think the I, I think Rosanna's right. The struggle is just going to continue. I mean, we have to fight. Trump might be off the stage, hopefully, um, uh, in a matter of days, or at least by the twentieth. But I think we have, and maybe he'll be off Twitter for per forever. That would be nice. But um, but we'll see. I think uh, we'll we'll still have to have to struggle against those forces that um are uh, really would like to roll everything back. Scott, I heard a rumor that you wanted to gloat a little bit. What are you going? What are you gloating about? Well, um, first of all, obviously about um, the uh, you know the 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 coup plotters, the fascist thugs being kicked out of the Capitol um, after being invited in by Capitol security. Uh, order has finally been uh, reestablished there. The vote was certified. Trump was forced into uh, retreat, at least temporarily. Uh, and that's great. But it also shows, I think, how correct the, the approach of our party has been for this entire time. You know, um, when, when, some folks were saying, oh, you know, Trump's not really a fascist. He's, you know, there's really no difference between the two parties. You're making too much of the fascist threat, whatever. Um, I think that's, you know, we, we were right. I, I'll stop, I'll stop gloating there. Mm -hmm. uh, but, um, but, I, but I'd, like like gloat, uh, I'd like to gloat too about, um, about the win in Georgia. I think we, that's an incredible victory on, um, and the people who were really responsible for organizing that were people um, like uh, Fair Fight on uh, the New Georgia Project, which um, actually uh, more people voted in the uh, more pe more Democrats voted in the uh, in the uh, runoff than they did in the in the in the November fourth election. So wow, it's just amazing. Yeah. They they had they had eighteenth eighteenth birthday parties all fall for young people turning 18 and registered them all. And youth vote is just, you know, that's gonna get stronger every year. Uh, I think it's, it's just a real harbinger of good things. To and come. we, you know, people sometimes ask, you know, or they said people sometimes diminish the role of voting, but I think, you know, it was absolutely correct to say that, um, you know, if the, the best way to block a fascist coup was a massive, massive turnout, um, and that's what happened in November. That's what happened 
uh, in the runoff in Georgia, and we're in a, a, a stronger position now. And the, that extreme right has been, it's, they're isolating themselves. And this is another turning point. I think it, it, was one, it was one way to um, uh, block a coup. I'm not sure it was the best and only way. But Rosanna, I was so, you know, on a seesaw, you know, Tuesday night, I was like up because the African-American Reverend, what's his name, was winning. Or not, or, yes. Yes, and, 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 and then uh, Tuesday, uh, Wednesday morning, I was a little nervous because the Republican was ahead and and then the second guy was, got into the, and then all of a sudden the coup happened. <laughs> and I was like, whoa, what the hell is going on here? Were, were you nervous as well? Definitely. I was, I was definitely nervous. Uh, but I, I, you know, I kept remembering of all those people that were involved in bringing out the vote in Georgia. It didn't just happen. I think this is an important lesson for all of us in the movement. And, and those just starting out in the movement. This is a perfect example of people, you know, and social movements and, and its development and its impact after, you know, it wasn't just happening. It didn't happen uh, in two years or two years, three years. It was a 10 year span of organizing, 10 year span of mobilizing, educating and all of this, which culminated in Georgia saving this country and its democracy and electing its first African-American senator and its first progressive senator. So I think it's really significant and it shows the power of the people, which is the most important uh, element for all of us is that we have to have faith in the people and its power when we unite together. And all across the country, people were phone banking, text banking, postcards, letter writing, all of these kinds of efforts that really paid off in the end. Thank you. And Anita, how is it that in the heart of the Confederacy, we can elect progressive, uh, you know, uh, democratic minded, uh, black and Jewish mm -hmm. senators right. in Ohio? I mean, I think uh, all, the cool, all the cool people are moving south, uh, Joe. I, I think <laughs> that that might be happening. Actually, the demographics of Georgia are way different now than they used to be. Um, because there is, I heard someone describe it as a reverse of, um, of the, the, the great migration uh, north. Uh, there's been a, a great migration south right now. And someone was complaining about Atlanta traffic. They don't, they, there's just been so many people coming into the state. Um, and all those people, I mean, they came from various places and they just needed to re-register to vote. But then there's also the, um, the yeah, they came, the demographic changes, I think, made a big difference. And then the hard work, I mean, like uh, Rosanna said, 10 years of this, of the Fair Fight and New Georgia Project really making a difference in the electorate. And they felt empowered by what the results of the November 4th election were. Um, and, and all that much more motivated to, to come out on, on the 5th of January. So it was a great success. It was the, re the response of the people of Georgia to the state of police murders. Mm -hmm. You know, you had the young man who was jogging while black, who was gunned down. Exactly. And you yeah. had the guy who was killed at the, in the, what was it, a Burger King parking lot or something mm -hmm. like that. And, um, and then there was the, so there was the Black uh, Lives Matter anti-police violence movement and, 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 and then the uh, electoral uprising that took place and, and it just continued mm -hmm. all the way uh, through. And I think that the a point that you made that, I think that one, I got 120,000 more votes than uh, Mr. Biden did. Mm -hmm. Isn't that something? So what's next, Scott? I mean, um... well, I just before that, I wanted to, um, you know, bring up like comment on that point that Anita made about the the demographic changes. So I wonder, you know, uh, big firms have been um, pushing production from the the north of the country to the south for a long time because of right to work conditions, wages are lower. So there has been a movement uh, in that direction. I wonder if now that's going back to to bite uh, the right wing, kind of in the ass, right? If you know, you, you have this, these changing demographics that are going to 
uh, start, you know, bring forth these new progressive movements and, and new political possibilities in the South. Um, it'd be interesting to look into anyway. Uh, well, it has to be translated. Isn't Georgia a right to work state? You know, yeah. and it has to be translated into legislation and Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, allowing union organizing to take place, that, 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 that has to happen. And the labor, uh, Black, Latino alliance has to be rebuilt, Rosanna, in, in Georgia and other places in the South. And, um, uh, and so that's going to be part of it as well, you know, it seems, it seems to me. But before that, we got to make sure that we are able to get to January 20th. <laughs> and Rosanna, there's been a call to impeach Trump, impeach him second time. Do you support that? Yeah, of course I do. Yeah, I, I, I totally support it. And also to invoke the 25th Amendment, Section 4, which I learned recently, is, is the key air section of the amendment that will get him out ASAP and you can tell it's it's mounting because he's so he retreated in such a way that you know oh no 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 you know I'm the best president and it's just disgusting the way he reacts but uh definitely I support it that video, I want that video go on about, that, uh, that video yeah. that, that he released last night and uh you know supposedly dialing it back was su in such a monotone and I think that monotone is like a dog whistle um, to his followers that mm -hmm. it's not a really a sincere, uh, um, that's something that he's putting across. But I think we do have to worry about the next, whatever, is it 10 days, 20 days, whatever it is. I should know that off the top. Impeach him first or 25th Amendment. Oh, it doesn't no. look like, Scott, that uh, Throw it all out of. wants to do the 25th Amendment thing. So, so does, wouldn't that I'm not a, a scholar of the 25th Amendment or of constitutional law at all, but wouldn't that mean that Pence could could um, uh, pardon Trump or grant him some kind of, of legal protection from whatever consequences might be coming from? And I'm not saying it should, he needs to be removed, um, uh, but I would I think impeachment is the best uh, course. Um, I know that, that Elon Omar is uh, drafting articles of impeachment. Um, and we should mention as well, Cori Bush, uh, newly elected Democratic uh, representative from uh, Missouri, from St. Louis, uh, uh, who has proposed a resolution to expel uh, all of the legislators who were part of the, of the attempt to um, overthrow the election and, and overthrow the government, which I, I totally support. Kick them out, kick them out now and then put them on trial. And after that, send them to jail. Yep. And after that, put them to, put them to work. But, Reconstruction. Uh, okay, so uh, what comes next though? Because you know, this has been a traumatic uh, event in the history of the, uh, I mean, Rosanna, COVID is ravaging LA. Mm. I read in the newspaper that uh, well, actually, I don't read newspapers anymore. I read online. <laughs> I had a newspaper in my hand in five years. I read online that, sadly, that the hospital, the, e the emergency uh, drivers and technicians uh, and the ambulances have to make on-the-spot decisions. If you're too sick, they don't even bring you to the hospital. Any Is that true? That is very true. Uh, you know, and it's very rampant, even in my own family, we've had uh, a number of family members coming down and we have a couple of them who are um, suffering right now from it. And then we've had a cousin that also has already passed from it. And there's mm -hmm. dangers of that. And, you know, it, it's a horrible position to put the, the paramedics, the, um, the, the MTs, because they're not really trained to make such calls, but they're right. being put in that position, unfortunately. Wow. So I think what comes now is to get enough relief for people so that they stop, they stop and stay home, stop with this idea that they've got to work. I mean, they do have to work, but uh, you know, uh, so they don't have this need 
that they have to work and they, they can comfortably stay home so that we can put this uh, virus, have this uh, virus under control. It's just not, it's not possible any other way. The way the other countries uh, like China and Vietnam and others have, have handled it is they've provided for their workers. Right. So that there is no need, there's no threat, there's no feeling that, well, I have to work because I have to feed my families. They even brought food to some, some people in their cities and stuff. We can, we can do that. We have enough money, we have all the resources, uh, and, but we just don't have the interest because our, our country is set up in a profit motive. Mm -hmm. And if there's no profit in it, it's not gonna happen. So we have to push this new administration to provide that $2,000 minimum relief to provide what's needed for all residents of this country, whether they have a documents or not, so that we can really put this under control because it is really just out of control. And, and like I said, it's, it's in our own family, it's just so many, it's just really concerning. Well, our hearts go out to people in your family and all those people who are suffering. Uh, in Los Angeles and uh, and around the country, we just lost another comrade to COVID on January the first. New Year's mm -hmm. Day uh, passed, uh, so uh, and a number of our comrades are suffering from it, and so including Michael, including mm -hmm. Michael, Michael, if you're listening, uh, you know, get better soon. By order of the Central Committee, we we want you to <laughs> take Stop care. Stop malingering, comrade. <laughs> Say it again, Scott. You know you're faking. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's not faking. He, he's having a little bit of a tough time. Well, so we want the two thousand dollars, and 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 then, uh, Scott, the Senate is divided fifty-fifty, and Kamala Harris is going to have to cast a vote to break the tie, but. They still got the filibuster. That's right. They still got the filibuster. So what's going to happen now? All of these great, you want a Green New Deal? You want to reform the police department? So I, you want a jobs program? But the, 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 what are you going to do about the goddamn I, excuse I my think line, this filibuster, is, Scott? I think this is exactly the what's happened, what, what the configuration of the Senate is pretty close to the, the dream of, of the ruling class, right? Because there's um, like any, any initiative from the people can be uh, blocked, watered down. Um, and yet the, the ability of, you know, the extreme right uh, to, to act is also limited. So it's the best position for them to play that kind of middle of the road, one side against the other um, kind of game. I was reading that uh, in this configuration, the, the senators like uh, Joe Manchin and Susan Collins and, and Lisa Murkowski are gonna have you know, even more uh, power than they did in the previous mm -hmm. uh, composition of the Senate. So this is, you know, we can't, we can't lose sight of the fact that, um, you know, the, the, the ruling class does not want um, a, a progressive worker-centered, people-centered uh, agenda. And we are gonna have to keep fighting. It's not enough to uh, take the Senate. Like Rosanna uh, said, it's the people's movement. That, that is the force that will, you know, set the conditions of what is possible. Wait a minute now, Anita. Yes. Anita, it just takes 51 votes to get rid of the filibuster. Just well, but 51. there's a, yeah, there are a number of Democratic senators that don't want to get rid of the filibuster at this point. I know that. But I think, I mean, I, I, I think we just have to see what we can get done. Uh, and I, I wonder, do you, I mean, could they, I guess the filibuster might stand in the way of things like Puerto Rico um, becoming a, a, well, not Puerto Rico, but Washington DC first becoming a state. I think that would be, that should be something on our agenda, our kind of long-term agenda to increase the democratic um, power of the working class in this country is to uh, make sure 
Washington, D.C. is represented. And immigrants have a path to citizenship, which is clear and, and, and straightforward. Um, and those would be kind of long term, uh, you know, long term ways of um, making sure our foundation is good for increasing the power of the working class. Yes, we, we want independence from Puerto Rico. <laughs> I know, right? Later. Yes, I know. They we yeah. get in trouble. Oh my god. I know. I just, yeah. <laughs> Scratch that. I well, wish they right. would I wish they would be a state, but I know that's just me saying that. So and, and statehood for for why for Washington, DC. Some of those issues can be settled uh, with respect to budget reconciliation mm -hmm. when when it goes into conference. And then there are some issues uh, that require uh, a vote, a uh, uh, sixty percent vote in the uh, Senate, right. and I'm not sure which is which. Mm -hmm. uh, but I do know that mm -hmm. unless we're able to enact some real live working class people centered legislation, Rosanna, over the next two years, we're going to be in trouble come 2022 when the next midterm election takes place. So. The Communist Party and the broader people's movement is going to have to be out there on the streets, really fighting, you know, over the next period. We got to um, we got to maintain the people to stay stay awake. Mm -hmm. There's no, you, you know, there's no sitting, sitting back and, you know, relaxing. Uh, it's, it's we have to stay awake and we have to keep pushing. We have to shame those Republicans that continue to you know uh, object to the to the elect to the electoral college we have to shame anyone who supported um, Trump mm -hmm. and enough so that when it comes to 2022 they get voted out and then we really have a clear majority and we don't have this issue so and we have we... to create that plan and push that plan to uh, to get them out and we need to isolate as well the, you know, recognize that there is, there are splits and differences even among the, the, the 74 million people who voted for Trump, you know, some of whom are rabid fascist thugs, as we saw in Washington, but um, many of whom uh, I, I, I suspect do not um, condone that behavior, do not support it, and are, um, extremely sort of confused right now and trying to figure out where their kind of political uh, compass is pointing. So we, we have to be uh, sensitive to that as well while, you know, refusing, you know, to, to compromise in any way um, with, with white supremacy, with male supremacy, with fascism. Um, but we have to there is a section of the working class that has to be won back um, to, or won to a progressive uh, side. You got the last word, Scott. Thank you everybody for watching us. We hope you stay strong, healthy, and safe. Please share this program with the masses. All you gotta do is click on, what is that button, Scott? Um, um, watch party. Watch party button. We mm -hmm. want you. We're having a webinar in another week or two with Vijay Prashad on, on Venezuela and the revolutionary process on, uh, being undertaken uh, uh, there. So please and check out our website at cpusa.org uh, and join the Communist Party. Goodbye, good luck, and take care. And make Thanks, sure you Joe. get that vaccine. We're pro vaccine at the Communist Party. Yes, yes we pro are. Pro vaccine. Pro science. Pro science. <laughs> Take care. Bye, Bye everyone. everyone.